I've seen everyone deserve uh, from the first to the last one in this club with all the, the tough moment that we are living in the five year when we arrive here to have the chances to to play the final is it's amazing. I want to remember my family. It's for them too. For all the people that support us in that moment, it's, it's amazing to, to reward them. And thank you. And we need to be ready now for the next game Sunday and, and then to prepare the, the final Madrid. Hi, it's season six, episode fourteen of the Tottenham Family Podcast. My name's Jav. Now it's the um, it was yesterday. It was the fifth anniversary of the Tottenham Family Podcast, um, and it seems only fitting that um, the original lineup on the very first podcast five years ago, five years ago, that long, um, would be reun- reunited. So joining me this week on the pod, um, firstly from Johannesburg, chair of the. Johannesburg Spurs Supporters Club, Nikki Mertz. Hi, Jeb. Hi. Hi. And from sunny Spain, I think I said those exact words five years ago, from sunny, Sp- from sunny Spain, Merrick Wells. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to you and to everyone else involved. Five years, five bloody years. Just think, five years. <laughs> well, five years. Well, yeah, you met a dad five years ago. Just think of this. Think of this, right? Five years ago, all of us were in our thirties. Some of us are still in our thirties. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it's, it's been a bit of an eventful week. Um, we're gonna. That's the biggest understatement ever. Um, we're gonna start. The, the first half of the podcast by talking about um, uh, Mauricio Pochettino, um, the man who was manager, coach of our club for the last five and a half years, and it seems only fitting that we talk about him and his time at Spurs um, and and some of our his legacy, I suppose, and also some of our favourite Pochettino moments. But firstly, um, the decision to sack him—it feels like it's one of those uh, JFK, Princess Diana. Um, 9-11 type moments you you sort of remember where you were Um, if I begin with you Nikki what was your where did you hear the news and what was your reaction your initial sort of thoughts Uh, my friend um, Kev in the UK actually messaged me and said Poch has been sacked and I thought he was joking you you know like he was playing a joke or something and I immediately turned to um, you know, the, the media capital of the world, Facebook. <laughs> and then I saw I saw everybody talking about it there. And I was like, what the hell happened? You know, and it was just, it, it was, I was absolutely in disbelief. And then I didn't cry again. Speak somebody else because I get so emotional Merrick, about it. Uh, Merrick, it's, it has been emotional. Um, Merrick, um, what, where, where, where were you when you heard, heard the news and what, what were your initial thoughts? I was, uh, I, I came out of work. I work as an English teacher in an academy in the evenings here in Spain. And I came out and I had uh, multiple notifications. And uh, the first one, I suspected it was um, his son. His son had been sacked from the youth team. And then I saw the third, the fourth, the fifth. And I was like, okay, yep, yeah, that's done. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that I, I, I don't know, really. It, it, I, I, can't, I can't say it was a surprise. I really can't. I really can't say I'm surprised. And it was, it was it's sad, but it wasn't a surprise. And was there a sense of, I mean, I, okay, so my, I mean, I was shocked as, as anybody else, and I, I suppose that maybe there was a degree, a degree of inevitability about it in that it had been talked about, um, the results hadn't been good. I suppose the timing, I didn't expect it to be so soon, but um, my initial reactions were shock. I felt really numb um, for the first 24, 48 hours. I was very surprised. I was re- very angry, very angry with, with, with Daniel Levy, the decision that, Taken I, and sad. Yeah, can I can I let the world into a little secret into uh, into our private underneath the uh, the curtain live that me and you share? Mm-hmm. Um, 
me and me and Jab, Jab and I. Sorry, I'm an English teacher. I should get my grammar correct. Goodness me. Jav and I uh, are in a little uh, WhatsApp group. Uh, we, we chat away. So uh, we're in communication every day. And uh, Jav, you were furious. You were raging. You were, you were an angry bunny. <laughs> I think some some of that some some of that is yeah it's it's to do with 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 the manner um, of some of this to, to to do with 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 the appointment of the person he's he's um, replaced him who we'll talk about that in the, in the second half um, but some of it is is just the sense of injustice the fact that you know I felt that okay results weren't good this season in in the league but I just felt that Pochettino. Um, we had West Ham at the weekend yesterday. I felt that was a game we could win, and we would probably would have won under Pochettino because they've been really poor. And I felt it could. I felt it could turn it around. No, mate, mate, Bournemouth away, oh, Brighton away, Sheffield United away. Oh, we could win these games. We didn't. Mm. 12, 12 months without an away win. It's a results business. I love the man. I love what he transformed our club from to what uh, you know his process, what he did. But he clearly. He clearly reached the end of his capabilities or his interest. More than that, we can't really talk about the injustice and uh, think that this is a new thing. We know the history of our club and how they treat people that we love. Jimmy Greaves, his boots were put out on the street. Pat Jennings was left to go to Arsenal. You know, people are unceremoniously dumped by that institution. They always have been. They always have been. There is that saying that, that there's no sentiment in football and... Perhaps you know. No your wife Lane. <laughs> the that's, border, my that. that's Martin Yole more more recently. Um, middle of a game, middle of a game, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, what, Jeff, I'd, uh, sorry, Mer- Jeff, sorry to quickly interrupt you there, but Merrick, I understand. Yes, it wasn't. It shouldn't have been a surprise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but uh, let's be fair, okay? I don't think that that Daniel Levy did anything. To help Pochettino in in this in this next phase of his of of what he was trying to achieve in this next five year plan, which he kept talking about, you know, if he had and 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 it's something that we'll talk about in the second half because of the pod because if he does what I think he'll do with with the one who's not to be spoken of, <laughs> and and he didn't do it he didn't do it with Maurizio Pochettino, I'm coming over in April and I. Well, then they're going to have to arrest me because I will slap Daniel Levy myself. I mean, he didn't <laughs> give him the opportunity. Yes, results weren't great, etc. But would you would your results be great when when players don't know if they're staying, coming, going? When you don't have money, everybody's talking about this wonderful new stadium, etc. But you're still not being given any money to buy anybody to strengthen anybody. I mean, yeah, the man did brilliantly with what he had, but what on earth was Daniel Levy thinking? Daniel Levy was already thinking last season that he was going to get rid of Pochettino, in my opinion. And I think I, I said, in my opinion, a lot in the first pod, Jav. Hmm. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. There are, there are, you know, it's not as straightforward as black and white, obviously. A degree of what I am doing is, is, is you know, balancing up the, the, the discussion slightly. I mean, it, it is, it's a very, very sad thing to have happened. And also, to be fair, to be fair, in, in defence of what you were saying there, and in defence of Poch, he was saying for over a year, this restructuring problem is coming down the pipe. He hinted at it enough. Um, but uh, I, the, the noises coming out of uh, the club post this uh, traumatic day have been that there's no change on that front. Uh, the, he, who, he who shall not be named has said there is no money to spend. Uh, bear in mind there was there was a significant money spent at the summer you know, over the summer. I think we can all agree that Levy's not very good at doing business and uh, seems to let major targets get away because of the way he negotiates. And we we never know what goes on behind closed doors. But he did outlay some cash. He did get hold of a couple of yeah. targets. Um, yeah. But but we now look. We all knew at the time. We all knew that we, midfield great. Loselso looks like a fabulous player. I mean, I said you know from watching here in Spain, he's he's a great asset. But we all know that we had two ageing, heading towards the end of their contract, uh, central defenders. Where was the uh, the fixing in that area? And, that, you know, Poch has got to identify the that's a, that's, that's a failure of surely, surely, hold on, hold on, stop, stop, stop. That, those, oh, cent, oh. those, those centre-backs, surely, 
that was a failure of, of Enix to get them out, out of the door in a, t- in a timely fashion. We should have, same with Ericsson, Rose, um, either players who don't want to be there or uh, of a certain age. Um, they were players that we should have sold a long time ago, and I think Pochettino did hint at that. Um, th- there's something quite telling. In the summer, I don't know if e- either of you recall, and it's quite chilling now when I look, look back on it, um, in the pre-season... They asked Pochettino um, in a preseason. I can't remember who it was, but it, it, which game or whatever, but somewhere along the preseason. And they asked him a question about um, uh, transfers. And I think at that point we just got Dombele in in July, but you know we were still Levy was haggling and, and trying to get Lacelso and Cession, who we got we got on the final day of the window. And they asked him about transfers, journalist, and he just said something in a very sort of frustrated way. It came across uh, Pochettino. He said, "I'm the coach. I'm not the manager," which isn't technically true. He is actually his title was, although he started off as head coach at Spurs. After two years, he got a new contract, and he was he, his title was manager. But he kept emphasising, "No, I am the coach. I don't have any any um, say over transfers." At the time, I dismissed it and just thought, "Yeah, it's just you know, it's just playing games or whatever." And now I think, well, perhaps maybe that was the start of the rift between him and um, Levy. And well, there, was no, Jeff, there was definitely something there because remember he mm-hmm. said he thought, you know, if they win the Champions League final, then he would uh, walk away and say he's done what he can do. You know, he he said that. That was. Before. That wasn't helpful. That's that's the, that's the one thing I look back on, and I think that in hindsight, I don't think he should have said that. And do you know what? I I I, I really wish, and this is a game with the benefit of hindsight. I wish that that we'd won that Champions League final. Everybody, ha- everybody as fans, would be happy. We'd you know, we'd be champions of Europe. We'd be basking in the glory for a bit. We've got a trophy. And if then at that point, maybe a week or two later, Pochettino had resigned on the top and left in a dignified yeah. way. It's just a shame that uh, it's happened in this way. Um, i tell you what, that would, have been, that would have been a perfect transition to he who shall not be named as well because you know he's recognised as a short-term success factory. And if, that, if they'd have won the Champions League and then said, OK, you go on and win a few more pots, let, let Poch go off somewhere else and rebuild a, a new thing in his image, hmm. everything would have been won. Yeah, yeah. Um, let, let's 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 reflect a little on his time at Spurs, um, his achievements. I mean, five and a half years. I know the critics would say we didn't win any trophies, okay. Um, but beyond that, were were there any achievements? I I would say that his his single biggest achievement was the fact that he changed the perception of Spurs. Um, I think that we went from a club who were consistently inconsistent to title challenges, um, Champions League yeah, cha- challenges last year. We went from being a punchline to uh, someone who could deliver a punch. Um, hmm. That's what he did to us. He gave hmm. us, he, he gave us spirit. He, he gave, he gave us um, respect in the ring. Effectively, hmm. you know, people, people learned to respect Tottenham again. You had, you had uh, um, pundits and commentators. Um, waxing lyrical about the way we played football and how we were for three three or four years the best team in England yeah it was it, yeah. It's, I will never forget I will never forget uh, the joys of what Potch brought us as Tottenham fans and believe me the frustrations and the heartache and the disappointments and the annoyances that we'd had will fade quicker than the joy and we'll have to be careful in the future to remember that it wasn't all sunshine and roses during this period but the highs he gave us were extraordinary um, Nicky for you what, what, what were the things that that you remember of, of that era well, sorry actually rewind a bit what, what were the um, what do you think uh, Pochettino's achievements were over the, over the last five and a half years well we, we consistently got um, top four you know he delivered a Champions League to, for us uh, we, we were competing <laughs> And uh, I think I think for me, belief. He, he gave us belief. Tottenham fans had just lost belief in in Spurs, and he brought the he brought the old style, the classy Spurs back. You know, the way that we used to play um, back in the day. Everybody everybody loved exactly what Merrick was saying. I mean, the way we the way we used to play. 
um, he brought all of that back. He brought the belief. He brought the passion. He he brought <sighs> consistently top four, achieving top four. Uh, you know, and and he just made you fall in love with with Spurs again. And uh, w- yeah, okay. So we didn't get a trophy, but I think I think. Partly um, to blame is the media because of the way they harped on about trophy. He probably felt the pressure even more so after Champions League. And I remember after reading his his um, uh, biography, he that would have affected him really badly because of the way he went on in the book after that that Newcastle defeat um, a, a few seasons back on the last game of the season. Yeah, the five one. I can only imagine how how he must have felt after this Champions League defeat. You know, especially it's like it's like we had our final against against Ajax. I mean, that night is just imprinted in my memory. The the emotions how everybody felt, how incredible it was. And and it's sad that that's probably was our, our highest moment in, in the five and a half years. I think that the, the... Champions League qualification that you mentioned the, the f- f- four seasons consistently back to back to back I mean we flirted a bit with it when, when Harry Rad- Redknapp was manager we qualified once but that was it that, that was it whereas here four seasons on a row and in, in a row and I know that I know it's a lot of fans are like yeah but it's, you know so what we want trophies it's all about trophies actually the sad or harsh reality of modern football is that you need to be you need to be at the top table of European football you need to be in the Champions League you know because of the revenue streams, because of attracting the best players, because of retaining your top players, and when he when Pochettino took the job at Spurs, um, his remit was to deliver Champions League football. That's what yeah. that's what Levy Weenick wanted them to do, particularly moving into that new stadium, and he he delivered that exactly. He did did exactly that. He he delivered that. And I don't think Pochettino was sacked because of anything he did in the last five years. Um, five seasons even I think that you can't question any of that I don't even buy this whole we've had a bad calendar year which whilst it's true y- y- football's played in seasons and I think you've got to judge him on if, you, if we're going to look at results and it's a results based industry we've got to look at the results this season and unfortunately the results domestically um, haven't been good um, and, and Pochettino played Pay the ultimate price for that. My my personal regret is, and, and I fully appreciate what Merrick said earlier about the fact that we had these moments like um, Brighton or Watford, and we were thinking like this is going to be the game where we're going to turn it around. Oh, you know, they're, they're an easy team, and we can beat them, and, and we didn't. So there was a, there was that sense of that there is no light at the end, end of the tunnel, and it actually we probably wouldn't have turned it around with him. But maybe I don't know. Maybe naively, I, I believed, and I still believe that. If he'd been given a little bit more time, he would have turned things around, um, and and we wouldn't. This wouldn't have had to have happened. But uh, yeah, it's. It, I think with every passing result, he made it more difficult on himself. That's that's the trouble. But you see, we're also you know, we're also <laughs> talk, we're also talking about it as if as if it wasn't. I mean, here, here's here's the terrifying prospect. It wasn't a, a mutually agreed pathway. Uh, we're looking at it, Pony, as 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 Pochettino, the victim. We don't know what happened behind the scenes and what the conversations were. We do know Redknapp hinted at the fact that his um, his team had spoken with Manchester United after Mourinho was sacked. Um, we know that we have heard rumours that he has talked about openly, thinking that that's where he was going to go. Mm. He does seem to have lost the drive and the heart, and, and maybe maybe effectively they sat down and said he, he said, "Look, I've delivered what you wanted." under the, the constraints of what you set out, you know, consistent Champions League uh, qualification. We now have to step up, and this is what I think we need to get to the next stage. And as, as Nicky said, maybe Daniel was... Un- maybe it's not a case of him being you know the evil dastardly landlord. Maybe the simple fact, fact was that the money isn't there to be able to do it. And so it maybe came to the point where Poch felt he couldn't deliver the next stage with what he had and Levy respected it and gave him time so they could sort out someone to come in and change it while he had time to try and fix it himself. It clearly wasn't fixed. There's something broken in, in that squad this season. Something's not working right. Yeah. And we don't know. Well, we, the, we, can, we can talk about it, but, but we don't know in the end. 
Okay. Okay. No, for sure we don't. But I think the, the players need to also take responsibility because oh, no, you know, everybody says, believe. yeah, okay, he, he lost the dressing room. And, and frankly, I think the loyalty of some of the players in that squad is absolutely shameful because I think they are the reason. You know, they just didn't perform the way that they should have or that they, the way they used to. So I think that uh, that many of the players are partly responsible for what happened. I'm not saying that Pochettino is blameless. Of course not. I mean, yes, I put him on a pedestal because because I absolutely idolise the man. But, yeah, he, he's got faults and he'll probably be the first one to admit what his faults are. And that, and that you know, it's not a surprise that... that Daniel Levy sacked him, or whatever the case is, and that was the decision that was taken. But, but for if rumours are to be believed, uh, and I believe Jose said this himself. Sorry, I don't mean to talk about the man who should not be named. But if if it's been a month that, that this has been in talks, that really annoys the hell out of me. I mean, that's the best kept secret of all. Yeah, there's uh, about that next half. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that that. You know, the possibility there that they are. I've, I've heard the talk they, they'd asked Poch to resign. He said no. So they basically went, right, we'll sack you, you get a payoff, but it will happen in this time frame. And I think mm. maybe, I mean, you look at the complete collapse in terms of league results or league performances in the last few weeks, it does indicate that pretty much everyone had, had knew the unspoken writing was on the wall. Again, I refer to uh, Jav and I are in a WhatsApp group with some friends and Look, mate, what, what was the earliest time we started talking about um, he who shall not be named? I think, it was, I think it was before I think it was before the Brighton and Watford games. And yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, it was sort of like we, we looked at those two games and on, on paper it was six points. Surely. Yep. You're Brighton and Brighton away, who were struggling. Watford at home, six points. We got one point from those games. Not to mention, you know, the manner of the performance at Brighton and uh, the the. the, the Champions League home defeat, the thrashing see, to, to... Also, yeah, they came they came off the back of uh, being knocked out by Colchester and being thrashed by Bayern Munich. And so it was already there. And look, we basically, as a group, as a group like 10 of us in a group, we war-gamed. OK, you know, if you want Poch out, what do you do? Who do you replace him with? That was always my question. Mm. Who is the replacement? And we went through who was available in the market and who was viable. And we all knew. So if we could work it out, just a bunch of, uh, you know fans on a whatsapp group this has been one of the most you know obvious moves i've seen in my time watching football it was inevitable it was absolutely inevitable uh, as i said before it's a, it's a results based based um, industry and and uh, ultimately pochettino did pay the price for the results this season i i but that's why they get paid money joe i, I, I know it's unfair i know it's cruel but the, if, if results aren't working who pays the price he doesn't even pay a price. He gets a payoff. He gets a payoff. I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't be upset for the situation. He's going to be fine, and he was. He's going to become an idol at another club, and he will. He will learn from this. And but we will. And we will still respect him, and he will still enjoy coming back to our club, and always have fond memories. But that's football. Football is a perennial moving megalith of a machine, so and uh, we're on. We're on. In terms of uh, in terms of legacy and me- memories, um, before, before I ask you about your, your your particular memories of him, I think I think I think that the, the enduring legacy was some of this we, we've we've touched on before. I think that um, that he ch- the, the the training ground, the stadium, um, the philosophy, he gave us a c- consistency in in the league. I mean, I think those top four consecutive top four finishes um, I think the last time we, we did that was back in the 60s I know that it was different then in terms of who would qualify for Europe um, format was different but gave us consistency in the league gave us hope changed the perception um, I think under him we, de- we dared it's also I think testament to um, Jose Mourinho in his first press conference he paid tribute to the work that Pochettino had did over, over, the, over the last f- f- five and a half years and, and he said that he'd always be welcome back at the, tr- at the um, at the training ground. Um, as a quote, I'm just going to yeah, read. It's his home. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah, and I, th- I think that was that was, that, was, that was a nice touch. Um, I think that th- also, you know, the 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 perception of, like I said, the consistency, challenging for the title, challenging for Champions League, the mentality around the club. You know, Spurs used to be known as Southern so- um, Softies or or this tag of being Spursy, and I think we. We got to the point yeah, we were challenging. We got, we just, 
and it, this maybe comes into the second half of the podcast, we just didn't quite get over the line. That that's you know, we, but we 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 we've got a platform now that somebody else hopefully can can take forward. Um, I think I, I yeah I think you won hearts and minds as well. I think that's that's a really important thing. I think you built built a built a bond. I'm just going to read out a quote from a listener um, Annette Smith, her Twitter handle is at Musketeer. She just says Mauricio and his team never won a trophy at Spurs, but he won something more important: our hearts and hearts and respect. That's a legacy that will outlast any piece of silverware. I think some fans or most fans are looking at that. They they they. they Few of them might raise their eyebrows and they might say, "Well, it's all about trophies," and and it, and yeah, to some degree it is. We, we all as fans want to win trophies, but I think the bond that he built with the with 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 us as fans um, is something that's enduring, um, and I think will live with us all. I think that's that's uh, probably the takeaway, Jeff, in terms of his legacy. His legacy is certainly um, it's a bit like we see. Uh, uh, Back at the last European Championships, uh, when England got knocked out to Iceland, I said, I'm retiring from following international football. I'm done. And Gareth Southgate in the last World Cup uh, brought me back into the fold. It was, it was a pleasure and fun and a, and a great journey to follow them. I used to get disappointed again. Yeah. Um, but um, Poch has done that for us. He's, he's given us back our love for our club. We've become very fed up, very bittered it's a general rule mm-hmm. I'm, very, I'm very disappointed by um in the in our hearts and Poch gave us back the right and the pride of loving our club again that being said i don't want to get too wishy-washy because in the end we will keep saying that's his legacy because he didn't win any silverware you know uh, if alex ferguson had managed uh, manchester united for 10 years and bought them no silverware they wouldn't be going how wonderful an epoch it was. They'd be saying they failed. And that's what we've got to learn as a club and as a support base. That's what we've got to learn from this experience. It is a results-based uh, uh, business. Um, we got to win. we got to win. Uh, indeed. In terms of in terms of memories, um, let me come to Nicky Big first. Big balls. <laughs> That was there was that yeah the Kahunas I think he re- he referred to when 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 was it, was it was it Kane a penalty Kane's penalty at Anfield a few years ago when we drew to all. Um, no, no, no. What I'm referring to what I'm referring to is uh, I think it was the dressing oh, room after the, the Champions City. League yeah 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 uh, yeah. yeah when he and he just came in and just yeah that 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 pose that moment and he hit uh, the, yeah. and he hit the flip chart. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Talking, talking of flip charts. I don't know. If, I'm sure. Well, I presume both of you saw saw the, me- the the photo of Pochettino's message on the flip chart. Yeah. Um, Nick, Nicky, what f- um, moments? Favorite moments from uh, that Pochettino gave us over the last five and a half years. Well, I think what stands out for me was his very first interview with his really broken English when he could hardly speak English and how, you know, the, the promises that he was making to us to, to try and achieve what he could and to change the perception. And, and he achieved all of that as far as I'm concerned. And I think that was that was really special for me. And uh, I, would, I would probably say um, a few things like, you know, the last, the final game, the lane finale, the one played against Man United mm-hmm. for the very final game at the old White Hart Lane. I mean, that was really very special. Um, what stands out is the way the way he would always come to the away supporters, you know, no matter what, and, and thank them for, for travelling. I think that was really special. And, and maybe I'm biased, but to me, I think he was one of the, one of the coaches or, or managers, whatever you want to refer to him as, who who actually started doing that and as a result everybody else started following suit. You know, he always used to come and 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 thank the the supporters and uh, and then I just saw other managers doing the same thing and I just thought, oh you bloody copycats. Mm. But be that as it may, maybe he's taught other people some humility, you know, respecting the fact that that actually we wouldn't be here without the fans. And mm. perhaps He'll write another book, and we all know exactly what he's feeling about this. And the one that that shall not be named will probably give him some advice of all the feelings that he will go through. You know, except I think he's leaving under a different set of circumstances than the one that um, should not be named when he left Man United. It's uh, it's it's very different. We we. Nick. 
I think. Nikki. Yeah. Nikki, you're going to find the second half of this show really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, no, to, to, to be to be to be fair well, to 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 to, 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 to Nikki, we we did say we, we did say we weren't going to refer to him in this. I I, I I did think that it would be important to to. to Make that distinction equally as I think in the second half. I think we should we should if where where we talk about um, Jose Mourinho I, I, where possible. It, it, I think we you know we shouldn't necessarily refer to Pochettino, but there will be some overlap. I don't know. I I, I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, Merrick, favorite Pochettino moments? Uh, well, you know it, it, it sounds easy. Um, it's an easy go to uh, the, um, the Champions League. Uh, momentous chaos of the uh, the Manchester City and the Ajax games and the aftermath of those games. Um, I have a, a curiously fond memory of a, uh, a rainy wet night in Stoke when we were chasing down Leicester mm. and we put five on Stoke. Uh, and that was, uh, as Nicky was saying, you know, Poch allowed us to believe and that was a moment well, just for a just for a few short tantalising days, I believed. I, yeah. I allowed myself to believe. Um, and the, yeah, the football. I've I've tried to explain to people here in Spain. You know, um, what is it? Why do why do we support Spurs? And I've always said, you know, despite everything I've said about winning and it must happen, and you know, we support Spurs because we want to see football that gets us up off our seat. We want to see football that yeah you know, that quickens the pulse. We want to. Um, watch a guy drop a shoulder and, and turn a play and do something fancy and, and dazzle us. We want to be entertained. And um, mm. and, and Poch did that. Poch gave us mm. that back. I mean, we had some we had some swashbuckling madness under Harry, but it was it had a soft underbelly. And I think the, the principle of what Poch gave us was that attacking flair and that that passion, that enjoyment. But we, we had a solid defence. He got rid of our glass chin. Yeah, which is sadly what came back in, in the last calendar yeah. year. Uh, for me, just to finish off on, on Pochettino, you know, for me, the, the moments that stood out were um, I mean, so many. But Manchester Manchester City away, twenty sixteen, when we went there in the league and won two one, um, and he came over to the yeah. fans. Um, more recently, the, the game that Merrick mentioned. Like, sorry, was that the Ericsson? Uh, That's the right. Goal? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, That's back again. That's right. And more more recently, the game that you mentioned, the Champions League um, uh, quarter final. Again, he came over to the fans. Um, there was the circumstances of that game as well, VAR, etc. And the final game at White Hart Lane, and and that was obviously a point indication anyway. But there was this. This I'm sure you know, both seen it, but there was a bit right at the end of the game where. Um, all the old the, the the legends came out, and then the, the first team squad came out, and. Uh, the cameras are, and it's up on a big screen so everybody can see the big screen and the cameras are just, sort of just going through looking at the players and then it goes on Pochettino and then suddenly or around about that time everybody's thinking that you know he's magic you know the chant mm. and Pochettino just sort of looks around around the stadium like the, the four corners um, and it was just a sense of achievement pride happiness um, and it, yeah. it's, a, it's a really ni- nice shot um, it came out Mm-hmm. When the rainbow came out over and then, the and then the rainbow came out of the stadium. Yes, um, getting to the semi, get, these, are, these are quite a few, quite a few. Sorry, to wrestle on the the, the, the semi final to to Ajax, um, obviously, um, and finally, and I'm getting to meet him. Um, I got to meet him once at Hotspur yeah. Way in April 2018, um, and I'm so grateful for that for the opportunity and. To, to meet him and and you know that was that was um, that was a special moment um, right in the next half of the podcast we will talk about Jose Mourinho we'll talk about the appointment of Mourinho we'll talk a little bit a little bit about yesterday's game um, you know where do we go from here as a club with, with Mourinho what can he bring um, we've got a shitload of questions from listeners I'm I will endeavour to get through as many of them as possible. Um, it, uh, apologies if I don't get through every every question. Um, but before we do all of that, um, Tottenham women were in action earlier today. Here is Bex with this week's Tottenham women's update. Hey, it's Bex. So quite a bit's been going on in the world of Spurs women since I last uh, left you a message. And most of that's because of the men's international break. And obviously Jav doesn't pod during that time. So before... 
um, the international break, I was telling people quite sternly that they really should go and watch the Arsenal Spurs ladies who played last Sunday, the 17th of November. Good game. Um, we lost 2-0, but given the fact that the last time we played Arsenal women in a competition, we lost 10-0, I'm going to take that 2-0 loss as a progress. The game was played at White Hart Lane, or whatever Spurs want to call it these days, and came away with the biggest viewers for women's football in the stadium at 38,262. Everybody there seemed to have a really good game. Um, the players said it was lovely to be there. Karen Hills said it was just fantastic to have that amount of support at that stadium and just to enjoy the game as much as anything else. It, maybe it wasn't all about the result. So that leaves Spurs women at sixth in the league. In amongst all the chaos that's been happening in the men's world this week, the women played on Wednesday night. They played Chelsea in the Continental Cup at King's Meadow and lost 5-1. Not ideal, but I think their focus quite rightly will be on staying in the league this year. So whilst it's nice to play against the bigger teams and get some experience, I suspect that they're not going to be 100% bothered about that. They play today, which is Sunday the 24th of November. It's a half past one kick off the play at Everton and that's up somewhere in the grim north that nobody really knows how to get to. Um, anyway, so I won't have time to give you that update. I'm actually away at the moment unless Jav can, which will be ace. Thanks, Jav. Um, any questions, I'm on Twitter at Bunch of Specs. Cheers, bye-bye. Welcome back to the second half of the Tottenham Family Podcast. Thank you, Bex. Um, just to pick up on Bex's report, um, obviously um, uh, Everton... Um, Spurs ladies played Everton earlier today. She referred to it in the podcast in in, in her report, even um, and asked me to provide an update on that. Um, so they played earlier today at um, WSL game against Everton at the Pure Stadium in Southport, and unfortunately the ladies lost um, three one. Um, our or goal was from Lucy Quinn. Um, Everton went. One nil up, Lucy Quinn got an equaliser and then um, Everton shortly afterwards scored another one and they went on to win the game 3-1. In terms of where it leaves the Tottenham women in the table, um, unchanged, so they're still six in the table. Um, Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal, Everton above them, Manchester United directly above them with three points and yes, yeah, Spurs are six. Um, ahead of West Ham, um, who... Are currently seventh, same number of points. They're winning their match um, and are ahead of Reading, two points. Liverpool are bottom of that table. There's 12 teams in the WSL. <laughs> right, um, let's talk about Jose, shall we? <laughs> do we have to? Um, we do, we do, <laughs> Nicky. Um, I. Uh, dead. Uh, the king. Uh, uh, I was going to say, for, thoughts, on, thoughts on Jose. Um, somebody. We've got a question further further down in in in, in the running order um, about um, from uh, it's from ASD um, who's the host of one of the hosts of the Echoes of Glory podcast. His Twitter handle is at tweets by ASD, and and in his specific question, his question is specifically for me, and he just says, "What will Mourinho have to do to win over me?" Um, so just for context, um, when I heard the news, well, bearing in mind that. The news about Pochettino broke on Tuesday, late on Tuesday, and there was already some talk then that that we were going to get Jose as a manager. And then as the evening drew, it was they're, they're, they are in talks, and it looked like the likelihood was that he would could be appointed as early as in the morning. And lo and behold, next morning at seven o'clock when I woke up, that's what had happened. So um, my initial reactions on the appointment were uh, filled with lots of colourful expletives. Um, and uh, yeah, hmm? sorry. You're not lying. It's absolutely yeah, it. yeah. Um, I think I called. I think I called Jose a wanker, um, a paedophile, <laughs> um, amongst amongst other things. Um, <laughs> so I wasn't best pleased. Um, that said, emotions were quite raw, and I've had a little bit of time to think about it, um, and I'm still. I still, I still a little bit uneasy. It still uh, s seems a bit un unreal. But to, to answer, to address ASD's question, I think for me, it's, I, I'm sort of beyond the point of being won over. I, he, he's there. Um, I'll be respectful. I'm not gonna, 
you know, I'll, I'll tone tone down on the on the expletives and and, and whatnot. Um, and I'll you know, I'll get behind the manager. He's he is a manager now, sort of Hotspur. So it's not a question of what he has to do to win me over. The bigger question for me is if you appoint a manager like Jose Mourinho, who has won trophies and is he's a serial winner. He's one of them. Whether you like him or not, he is one of the most successful managers, along with Pep Guardiola, in world football. He's won a shitload of trophies, shitload of league titles, um, in the in, in in our league, um, in 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 Portugal, in um, in Spain and and Italy. If you employ if you employ somebody of that gravitas, then I expect that in the next three and a half years that we will win league titles or a league title at least, um, possibly a Champions League title as well as these domestic trophies that you know, league cups and FA cups that that our fans craved for, and the accusation sometimes thrown at Pochettino was that he didn't take those lesser competitions, should we call them seriously? Um, for uh, me, uh, uh, he no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That that that's a that's a that's a that's a discussion for another another pod. I I think that that's been mis misinter- No, I think that's been misinterpreted somewhat, but. Um, for me, he's got to win those those league titles. That's what we've got him in for. If he, if at the end of his tenure he comes away with a league cup, for example, great, we've won a league cup, but we haven't employed him for that for, to 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 do that. So for me, if he doesn't achieve a league title, then he's failed and he deserves to be sacked. You know, but that's looking ahead several several years, several years down the line. For the moment, I've got over the initial anger bewilderment of the appointment of Jose and he's there so I will support him um I think probably Merrick before I bring you in I think you're probably somewhere on the other side of the spectrum to Nicky so I'm going to go straight to Nicky <laughs> Nicky for, thoughts on Jose and the appo- and the, appo- the po- appointment for Spurs okay so I cried when Pochettino was was sacked and I cried when Jose Mourinho was appointed because I, I said this on a Facebook post. I dislike him to to my very core and 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 it's a lot of people have said oh but that's because he was always playing against us and you can't I you can't deny what he brings and I'm not denying what he brings okay. However, exactly what you said, Jav. He's been brought in to do a job. He's been brought in to deliver titles. I don't want just the FA Cup or, okay, not the Carabao Cup this season anymore because that's out the window, but I want Champions League or I want Premier League. When he delivers one or both of those, then then maybe I'll change my tune. But I'll be very upset, very upset if he gets given what Pochettino asked for and, and achieves with it because then Pochettino wasn't given enough time, in my opinion. But back to the special twit, uh, sorry, special one. Yes, everyone's saying he's changed, he's not as arrogant, he's more respectful. It's been four days, five days, for goodness sake. Give him time. The true Jose Mourinho will come out soon enough. I have no doubt about that. Cannot stand the man. Is he good? Yes. Do I have to like him? No. Does he care if I like him? I'm sure he doesn't. He doesn't even know who I am. So as long as he delivers what he says he's going to deliver and what he's been brought in to do, then by all means, I'm not there to go, oh, I've got to get behind the manager. I'm there to get behind Spurs. He happens to be part of that. So, yeah, I'll hold my hands up and go, okay, fine. But I'm never going to love the guy. I'm never going to be fond of him. Do I watch his interviews? No, I don't because he irritates the living crap out of me. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it is what it is. And And maybe I'm still angry. Maybe, sorry, sorry, Mary. Maybe I'm still angry and maybe I will mellow over time. But I'm never going to love the guy. I know that. I know that I'm never going to love him. You know, he went over to the fans yesterday to, you know, thank them or whatever. That's something that Pochettino used to do. He went over and he hugged he hugged uh, son in in you know while they were busy training or whatever, as as Annette Smith said, you know it, really Spurs is is that what you think is going to make endear him to us is the fact that he is he's doing all the things that Pochettino was doing 
It's pathetic. I don't appreciate him being shoved down my throat every five minutes. I mean, Spurs marketing department is just going over the top. I understand we've got to move on. I understand it's a new manager. But really, don't force me or try to force me to like the guy. He has to win my approval. I don't care what his history is. His history is he hasn't done that with Spurs yet. Before I okay. bring Mer- before I bring Merrick in, I, I, I think that no, I think that looks. <laughs> I, I think I think it's absolutely. I think you're, you're right. You don't have to like or love the manager to support the team, and you can continue to do, to do that. And I and I also agree with. I mean, time will tell. Time will tell if you know he's at the, the, the last few days. He's he's come across as very humble. He hasn't reverted to type. I wonder at the point at which you know we lose a game or a decision, refereeing decision goes against him whether he will revert to type uh, in some senses does it really matter i suppose i mean it's it i, I like the way that pochettino was i like the fact that he was a decent guy etc and if if Mourinho is a complete antithesis of him and and is a little bit of a nasty character or, or the all the rascals should we say it's not great but does it actually matter in the wider scheme of things if we're winning winning trophies as you said we don't have to like the person we we, we support the club um, yeah. Just finally, before it's Merrick, I also agree with you in the this sort of almost like fawning over Pochettino. People say that's not Pochettino, Freudian slip. <laughs> fawning over, um, Freudian slip. <laughs> fawning over <laughs> Mourinho, where people are like, "Oh, let's come up with a chant for him," and I'm thinking, really. He's been there for five... no. No, no, Marina. No, 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 no. Don't you dare. He's been there he's been there for five minutes. Come on, and there are... come on, come on, come on. He's been there for five he's, been... he's been there for he's been there for five minutes, Merrick. He's been there for five minutes and there are players at the club longer than they've been there longer, Ben Davis, five years, there are others I can name that don't have a chant. And I and I find that whole oh let's get a, let's get a, let's, you know, come up with a chant for him, two minutes in a job, is a little bit a bit weird. But anyway, that's it. Thoughts on thoughts on Jose. Okay. Okay. Do you want to mute yourself so you don't get too angry with me? <laughs> <laughs> right. Number one. Okay. Um, we talked in the first half about what Poch gave us back in our love of the club. Okay. Be careful. You're drifting into a love of personality. It's his love of club. Uh, it's not love of Mourinho. It's not love of Poch. Okay. Poch is gone. First thing. Number two. Yes, this man is coming. There is no manager like Jose Mourinho. There is no manager like him. He is the most successful manager still in world football. And we, what Poch has done is delivered us to a position where we can employ that man. This is an inevitable step. And this is what happens now. We don't. Alex Ferguson was not a likable man. He was a winner. We now have a winner. I don't care if you like him. What we want him to do is win, and that's what we want our club to do. Uh, there's a possibility of players that weren't pulling their weight and now excited about the possibility of having this this great manager, this great um, figure there, if he is the, able to give... I know he has a short-term vision that happens at the clubs he's at. I get that. But if that short-term vision means he says to Vertonghen, Alderweireld, and, and players like that, big push, come with me, boys, let's go on an adventure. And he takes the potch model the potch uh, team and delivers the trophies that last big push that we all know as much as we love him he did not get us over the line if Mourinho can do that all hail the king all hail the king i have a slightly different perspective as well which is as much as i disliked him for being the successful manager of clubs that i hate chelsea real madrid manchester united to name but three um i have always depreciated his personality and the color uh, he brings to the soap opera of football off the pitch and to see him walking down the Chelsea high road in a Tottenham tracksuit cracks me up cracks me up <laughs> to be honest with you. the guy the guy's got a sense of humor I, I would admit it I enjoyed watching his press conferences when he was when he was managed Real Madrid here he wound people up something chronic remember for years we complained we wanted a big hard man who did some shithousery and we, we wanted more more bite from our team now we've got it we want bite and win from our manager as well we don't want a likeable uh, dad. We want a fucking winner. Come on, Tottenham. Be convinced we can win. 
you Merrick, go. That's you why said I went over. no, and that's and that's fine, and you make some valid points. You said something earlier about um, the, the the fact that we're Spurs fans, and 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 uh, and we like the the flair and the swagger over the years. Will yep. we have to compromise that? With Pochettino, you know, can you can you have a, so, with, Mar- Pochettino, with, Mourinho. with Mourinho even? It's, it's fucking hell. Um, with uh, with jo- with Jose, can you have? Um, I, I think I think the bus parking. I think the bus parking thing is slightly overrated. Um, you know, I think he's, it often comes back to, and I've heard it said other places where it often comes back to that 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 uh, Champions League match with, with Inter over Barcelona. And you've got to bear in mind, he had 10 men and he was holding a 3-1 lead. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, he does sometimes. He he plays games out. Yeah, if that's what you... But we've said... I actually said it. I listened back to our first pod. And the first opening salvo I said in uh, after the match against Hull five years ago is, that's the mark of champions. You win when not playing well. If, Mm. If we have to play unattractive football to grind out results, to be honest... I've had enough of telling people I'd rather lose seven five than win one nil. I'm happy to <laughs> win. <laughs> Let's get a winner in and win. If we have to lose a little bit of that flair, so be it. Man United and Chelsea fans don't complain about their lack of uh, glory football when they're winning glory. They complain about the lack of beautiful football when they're doing crap. Well, in terms of football, and I know it's only one game. Yesterday, um, there was some good signs in terms of um, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. It, it, for yeah, for, for about an hour. That's for, that's a fair point. Um, and and then d- defense did crumble a little, a little bit at the at the end, which is which is a concern. But that's that's good in the sense that it shows that there's work for him to do. We knew that. Um, and okay, they were a shit team, but. There were some good, some encouraging signs, and it wasn't, you know, in that hour, it wasn't like we pe- played boring, park the bus football. There was, exactly. there was some flair. There was some. Good, so let's let's talk about ga- game, and, and there were. Oh, let's, second, but this is, this is unfair, on. Mourinho. I have to say, this is unfair, Mourinho. Look at look at the names of some of the players that he has moulded into greater and more exciting attacking players: Milito, Ibrahimovic, uh, Ronaldo. Okay, uh, people like Son. And and Deli Ali are going to excel under him. You know, Mourinho may play a defensive-minded, structured football, but he can only get away with that because he develops and utilizes attacking, very fast counter-attacking football. Go back and watch some some uh, videos of how quickly the Real Madrid team he managed used to counter-attack in seconds. I mean seconds. They would pull apart opposition. Uh, I'm looking forward to those bits that people tend to gloss over and forget about Mourinho because they want to slag him off and say he parks the bus. He invented that quote as well. Clever man, I tell you. There you go. He, he, he did. And, and, and do you remember who, who it was against? Us. That quote. It was us. <laughs> yeah, it, it was us. It was it was us. It was it was. A, I think it was a nil nil draw against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, Bridge in yep. 2004 when Jack Santini was manager. Anyway. Um, but also, of- also, do bear in mind, do bear in mind what, sorry, one more thing, one more thing. Because I am genuinely, I, I'm sad about the passing, but yeah. I am genuinely excited about what this is going to bring us. And I think that something that people are not quite ready to accept yet, but will come to realise, is that he has, he has gone from dismissing our club to becoming gradually a great, great admirer. And I think some of the things he's been saying, I know you think it's all PR fluff, but I genuinely think that he sees this as his genuine his genuine pinnacle challenge this is the one to bring a club that has been consistent for what a better phrase spursy bottlers to being real respected winners and i think and look he's tried to buy most of that but, squad already there are parallels he's, he's gagging for this i tell you <laughs> there are par- some parallels to be drawn between us now and chelsea in 2004 when he Absolutely. took over when he took over there when when chelsea had a pop- popular manager in, Ra- in ranieri who'd been there at the club for a few years they played some good stuff but they hadn't won any trophies and i think the season that Ranieri's last season with Chelsea, he took them to second, which was the highest finish in however many years, and they still fight. But Abramovich, okay, different champ, maybe slightly more ruthless than Levy, um, fired him that summer, brought in Mourinho, and they they won trophies. And and maybe he'll do the same with us. And and we can only. There's a good thing to think about if Mourinho has his short-term two to three-year plan. If he brings a couple of big pots into our trophy cabinet he makes the club a totally viable market option we will then get 
our Abramovich. We will get some um, absolute dirty rich um, sugar daddy who'll come and splash the cash on us and give us our decade of dream success and we can all die in our beds happy. Decadence. It will all be because... Yeah, decadence. I, don't, I want a decade. I want there to be a Tottenham decade. I want people to look back and go, there were seven t- domestic titles, three European titles. That was when Tottenham ruled football. And I can say, yeah, I was there. I wore that shirt. Bang. Right. We've got lots of questions. I am not going to get through every single one. Apologies. Um, I will save some of these possibly for a future pod, which I'll talk about in, at the end of the show. Um, firstly, Darren Pamenter, he just says, positives, away win, big improvement in Delhi's form, look much better for the first 60 minutes, negatives, defending on corner, corners, no session, session in the squad, our best player in the last two games, Lacelso not used. And then his question, sad to see Poch's players play much better better had they given up on Poch faults Nikki yeah I think oh, sorry Nikki go no 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 worries well, I think I touched on it earlier I do think that uh, I, th- I don't think all of them gave up on Poch I think that uh, there are just a few bad apples in the squad and unfortunately they influenced the game so you know if they if you're disinterested and you're not wanting to play you it, it takes it takes more than just one or two to to play well. So I think I think unfortunately some of them they just looked disinterested. They, they I think they were they were get they were they were aiming for for him to leave. So so yeah, um, it is sad. But at the same token, um, you know, new new manager they want to impress. They want to keep. They want to win their their place in the squad. Uh, I do think so. Just to go off topic quickly that. Um, if anything, where we need to strengthen is, is right back because Aurea is a liability, period. And unless unless uh, Jose can do something with him, we need to be in the market for a really good right back. But uh, but yeah, it was. I mean, it, it, it's the first the first hour was was great. We we looked good. It, it looked like there were glimpses of the old Tottenham, and and that was a pleasure to watch. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to put that solely down on Jose. I think the, the players wanted to wanted to obviously perform and, and show try to show off their best to to get selected consistently. Um, I, I think we know we know Poch. One of the first things he did when he came in was he had to clear out the dead wood that wasn't pulling its weight. And I think there's a degree or an argument to say that there's only really a very small elite band of managers who have the ability to clear out Deadwood in their own projects and I think maybe that's where Poch suffered. Poch wasn't Alex Ferguson he couldn't stab and remove his own players and I think that's uh, where bringing a new manager in is going to help. Um, yes you saw players pulling their weight some more um, I still have a massive question mark over Ericsson was he really pulling his weight? <laughs> you know, I, I, what's happened to that man? Oh my goodness me was it? Yeah, because I, I, for me, it, it was difficult to stomach. Th- this is a bit that I, I'm struggling with, and I, and I think that um, it's great, Merrick, that you I think you're, you're at a position as a as a Spurs fan that you've got over the initial shock, you've accepted it, um, and and you've reflected upon it, and you think actually it was the right right move, and we've got the right guy, and that's great, great, and I think, but and that's fantastic. So that's where that's where you are. That's where many of many people are, many fans are. I think I'm still trying to reconcile the what happened to Pochettino um, what I feel about that my anger at Levy and um, and being a Spurs fan and trying to get behind the, behind the team and, and, and get behind what, and, and get behind, behind the, 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 the new manager so when it comes to what, it makes you feel any better think of it this way if Mourinho fails then we can all finally say, yes, it's definitely leaving spot. Well, uh, do you know what? Part of me, I mean, we as a, as a Spurs fan, I hope it doesn't come to that because we don't want the manager, whoever he is, to fail. We, we want to be be successful. But the the other, talking about sort of reconciling two things, the thing that I, I also struggle with yesterday, it was great seeing the players, the 11 t- that took to the field and the substitutes that came on, except for Ericsson, who was just a shite, um, play well. It was great to see that as a fan, but at the same time, 
it grated me that it, these it, same it, it, these it, same oh, these it? same players didn't didn't put in any effort under Pochettino. Now you might say that you know the perhaps the desire wasn't there and it was harder for for Pochettino to keep them motivated. Perhaps and you can certainly throw things at Pochettino and you know bring up critiques like talk about tactics, substitutions, selections, all, all you want. But I think none of that counts or excuses for the fact that too many times this 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 season. Brighton being the worst manifest- manifestation of this, players didn't didn't turn up. They just l- l- let down and cheap potch and and the fans and that's that really, I think is a bit unforgivable. It, it's psychology. I genuinely think about it. Sit down with a cup of tea and run through it. You could name a, a starting eleven and a brilliant bench made up of all of the Alex Ferguson players that he sold, that he bought in and then sold over his time at Manchester United. Look at some of the decisions he made at times and people find it baffling. You're selling an absolute superstar at the peak of his career. No, no. Alex Ferguson, Brian Clough, a similar manager, and people who had the ability to recognise when a player had reached the end of his journey under him and in his system. I think in the end that's probably Poch's blind spot. And it, it might not act even be a blind spot. It might be, as Nicky was saying, that's where Levy failed to back him up, where he knew he had to cycle certain players out. Even know, you know, look at the end of that during the summer season, during the close season, we were all absolutely relieved we got to the start of the season with with Alderweireld and Ericsson still on still on contract with us. Looking back, we now understand why Poch was keen and happy to move them on and replace them in. It needed a refresh. Uh, if you have a refresh of the manager rather than the squad, if they do the business, it, it's a professional blood sport in the end. <laughs> That's what it is. They're all mercenaries at the end, mate. All we do is love the piece of fabric they wear. I've become old and cynical about this. I really have. <laughs> yeah, but and, and you're right, and, and, I, and I don't disagree with all of that. But as a as a fan, it's disheartening when you see players not give it their all, whatever the circumstances. Absolutely, um, because at, sorry, Jeff, carry on. Go go for it. Uh, you're right. Why? Because they get paid to perform, regardless of how you're feeling, regardless of what your your thoughts are for the for the manager. You get paid a big sum of money, okay? And and whatever you're feeling is bigger than 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 um, is less than than the badge that you're playing, the quest that you're playing for. So you get paid a lot of money to show up and perform. End of. And if you don't, get the fuck out. End of story. The yep. fact that, yep. that now Jose comes along and now all of a sudden you want to pick up your, pull up your socks and, and, and now you think, oh, well, it's time for me to perform because, oh, new manager, whatever the case is, then go go to a bloody shrink and get your head sorted out because you get paid to show up every single game and perform. End of story. I don't care what happened with Pochettino. I don't care what's happened with Mourinho. You, you are being paid to show up and perform. It annoys the hell out of me. That's the it's these it's these players that think they they're bigger than a club. How, uh, do you think that anybody is going to want to buy Ericsson because of the way he's been playing? Anybody? I'm not I'm not dissing what he's done for the for us because he's been brilliant for us in the past. But if he thinks that that the way he's performing now is going to to have any suitors come knock on the door for him, he is seriously mistaken. Seriously. And that's the problem with modern day football. Mm. They get paid too much. Their egos are too big. All, all that sort of thing. It's it drives me bonkers. We've got a question on the running order um, from Kent Goodrich, um, and he just says, "As much as I love Poch, um, he's gone, and we have to back the team. What would Jose Jose have to do to win you over?" Now, I, I answered a similar question earlier that, that, that ASD had, had asked me and there's no point asking you Merrick because I think mean, you're one over so Nicky what well, does, I'm, what, 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 on, I'm one over because I understand it has to happen but yeah I mean by the way yeah Nicky's holding him to a very high bar and that's what I'm showing that's what Poch has delivered and the improvement in our, in our club has meant that we expect this manager to come in and win titles not just cups but titles I, I, I want him to, to to glitter glitter the love success on, on our badge as much as he's done it on previous clubs. Yeah. I want him to win. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. But I also want I want him to win without the financial backing. Without money throwing money at it. I, you know, for me, 
that will be his biggest challenge. Can he, can he use our youth that's coming through the academy? Can he improve the current players that we've got? Can he do it without the financial backing that he had at clubs like, like Chelsea uh, or Real Madrid? I wouldn't say um, United because that was a bit of a flop. But uh, I just think if he can do that... If he can do that, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it was a cup. Come on, it's not a title. <laughs> yes, he wasn't given enough time. But but at the same token, I think he was his biggest his biggest enemy, um, his own worst enemy. So if he can remain humble, yes, I understand we want somebody who's fighting. By all means, fight away. But if he can achieve all of that without money being thrown at him, because let's be honest, Levy's never been a big spender and never, and I don't think he's ever going to be ever. So if he can achieve all of that and still develop our youth the way that Pochettino has, uh, yeah, okay, he might win me over. I'm never going to like the guy. I've said this already, hmm. but I will respect him. He's not been able to do it at other clubs. He's always thrown money at the problem. So if he can do it without the money factor, then, in my opinion, he can, you can, he can deserve the title of being... Let me finish, Merrick. Stop interrupting me. If he can do that, if he can do that without... Um, and, and win titles without the money, and and then, then he deserves the... Sorry, you, locked, you, you made me lose my train of thought. Then he deserves the title of being the best manager in the world. Because then he would have, he would have achieved that. I think that... Um, well, I think it's, it's just it's, it's a, bit, a bit more than money that that that's that's going to prove to be potentially a challenge for him. I ho- I hope look, I want him I want him to succeed because I want us to succeed. But I think that there are questions, which is well, will there be money? Um, and it's, if we assume that actually suddenly, um, da- Daniel Levy. Uh, loosens the purse strings and makes money available great but I think it's a little bit more more than that so for example um, I think you've got to look at the salary structure um, at Spurs so that probably needs, needs to change if you, if you want to entice the best players and, 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 and keep some of the star players that you've got um, there's also this Levy's haggling and last minute deals if that continues and that that's how, that seems to be commonplace and you know if we're going to get players or not get players or get players but get them on the last day of the transfer window that's going to frustrate the manager i think that jose Mourinho wants to um get the deal any manager wants to get the deals done early in the transfer window um those are some of the challenges which pochettino faced if those challenges uh, are still present for Jose Mourinho, then unfortunately the relationship between Mourinho and Levy will sadly go the same way as it went with Pochettino and every other manager b- before that. And I think the only difference is the breakdown is going to be at a much bigger scale with Jose. Can you just imagine these two egos colliding? So uh, these are just some thoughts. I don't know how it's going to pan out. Um, but I, I hope that, that he gets the the backing and if, and if he has to work with limited resources as you said Nikki then it's going to be a real challenge of his ca- character and his coaching skills to to get to get more out of what he's got um let's but, move on to sorry, go on quick, say, but uh, we shouldn't as fan base we shouldn't be wishing restrictions upon the, the man who's leading our club nobody's sorry. wishing no, hold on hold on no who, nobody Nobody's wait 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 wait. Nobody's wish. No. Say he should do it with the same. If he gets given, if he gets given more money to spend than Poch had to spend, then he he won't deserve success because it would have been unfair. No, if 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 appointing Mourinho means that we're, uh, one of the greatest managers in terms of his record in, in club football history. If appointing Mourinho means that we finally get our chance to knock at the big table, we finally got a chance to appoint one of his biggest greatest names. Then I would imagine there probably would be a situation where they trust his judgment. If he if he start, if he won a trophy in the first or second half of the first second season, they would give more money to him. I think it would be inevitable, and I wouldn't I wouldn't see that um, he, any victory he has would be any less. It's just part of a progression. Football players come in and out of clubs, and so do managers. And Poch is part of that line and that journey towards the top. And that's where we're at. We're at that chance now. This is the man who's taken over the baton to get us to the top. If he doesn't, then it is the club structurally that's failing to achieve that. And then that's the point where we all have to say it is time for Enoch to sell and give us someone else. 
that's the way I'm rationalizing it to make it clear. Okay, for sure. Um, for sure. I do agree with that 100%, but I, I hear where you're coming from. I do hear where you're coming from. Um, but yeah, I just think, I just think that it, it, like Jazz said as well, it would be his biggest challenge to do this. I'm not, I'm not wishing him to fail. Obviously not. I'm a Spurs supporter and I want, I want to win as much as the next person wants to. But I just think that if, if at least for the first season, season and a half, if he had to do it under the similar circumstances, I'm not saying that, I, I think Levy is going to give him some money, but, um, I think if he had to do it under similar circumstances and deliver something, that would be his biggest achievement, in my opinion, because he would have done it under difficult circumstances, mm-hmm. under the circumstances that Pochettino had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I, I, would, I would respect that. I think he'll get money, um, whether it's the same as he's got at, at his disposal at other clubs remains to be seen, whether he... You know whether some of the constraints I, I, I mentioned earlier that with, with, with Levy in terms of um, salaries, in terms of Levy's yeah. last minute ha- haggling, a presence and 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 make it more difficult for him. I don't know. One thing that I would say is at Porto, where he made his name, he didn't have huge resources, and they were they they were um, successful. Um, won the Port- Portuguese league, and then this small club went on and win the Champions League. So. Um, his pedigree as, as a coach is is second to none, and it's pr- it's probably fair to say that more in more recent years, because he's managed big clubs like Chelsea. Uh, well, um, uh, they've got money, shall we say? I wouldn't call them a big big club, whatever they think. Um, Inter Inter Milan, Real Madrid, Manchester United, because he's managed these big names. He's gone into these clubs with the expectation that there will be money money to spend. He might be realistic, and he might know that. That there isn't as much money to spend uh, um, at, he at, said at Spurs. Such, he? So hmm? he said as such. He said as such. He knows there's not money to spend. He says yeah. the squad's good enough. He says he mm. believes in the squad. And he believes in the academy products. I I, I think I, and I, yes. I I hope I hope I hope Nicky this will win you over a little bit. I think we might be uh, the home for the Jose Mourinho Renaissance. I think I, I want to see the Porto Jose. I think he's come back hungry. I think there is a little bit more humility there, but I think there's a steely-eyed determination. He has an awful lot of people he wants to prove wrong, and he wants to show, look, not only not only were you wrong about me, but look, I went and did it again with a club you've spent 30 years laughing at being bottlers in your face. Right, we're going to jump on because I'm, I'm <laughs> keen, keen to, 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 to finish this. So I'm not going to read every question, and for the ones that I do read we're going to try to keep answers brief um kevin kirk with the appointment of, of a manager who has won trophies at five, five six different clubs i think it is actually has levy finally run out of places to hide and must now back that manager and supply him the clientele needed to, to, to succeed yes one word answer yes yes thank you yeah, I think I think if it if it doesn't work out, then yeah, I suppose it it would be. You know, I know I know we're all uh, slagging Levy off, but we've also got to remember that he's a businessman first and foremost. So he has done a lot for the club. Um, yeah, he's not a big spender when it comes to when it comes to the players and and salaries etc. But uh, but you've got to respect him for what he has achieved and what he has brought brought us. But yeah, he won't be able to hide. Okay, question from David Fornell. Before we get back to lyrical about the result, um, it was a really poor West Ham side. Do we think that the inevitable sacking of Pellegrini, Silva, Everton, Emery, Arsenal, um, forced Levy's hand and got Mourinho now before those other clubs did? I think there's a great degree of truth in that. I think it was very much an element of got him, you know, for, for a change for Levy to move because you could see the chess pieces lining up. This would be the first in quite a protracted manager merry-go-round, and we got in and avoided all the hassle. I think, that, yeah, for once, I think Levy Levy made a very um, incisive, decisive, quick action, and I, I applaud him for it. As as, I'm, as painful as it has been, I applaud him for his direct incisiveness. Yeah. Okay. Fair. What do you think, Jeff? Um, I think that it's questionable whether 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 he would have taken positions that. West Ham, Everton, and Arsenal. I don't think they are quite the attraction as we are now, and that says a lot of, mm. of, of both what Enoch have done and what Pochettino has done over the last few years to take this club club forward. Uh, certainly, they would have come in for him. Um, 
whether he would have taken the, taken those jobs, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Watch. Um, uh, what's okay? Question from John Stiggles. What's the sadder of the following two fan reactions? West Ham fans getting shirt Spurs shirt signed by by Mourinho, or Woolwich fans begging for Pochettino to join them? <laughs> So very low down. <laughs> I think that it sparks desperation. That not that they're asking for Pochettino, but that, 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 you know that, that, that he's a bad coach or anything like that. But that that they are willing to go to somebody who managed one of their arch rivals. And as for the other, as for the West Ham fa- fam signing Spurs shirts or getting Spurs, getting stuff signed by Mourinho at the game yesterday, um, that's just pathetic, really. No, that's pretty that, pathetic. That's, 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 just, that's, just, that's just canny banking. They're just going to sell them online to... <laughs> yeah. You're right. I'm up. I didn't think about it, definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, a question from Ed Brad. I it's smart, haven't they? <laughs> Question, question from Ed, Ed, Ed Brad. So, say if I was able to dispose of a certain blonde Zanish player at Spurs, how much acid would be required to dissolve the body? How many bricks would I need to tie, tie to the body? Could I feed him to the pigs? Would the seagulls at South End eat him before the tide uh, comes in? Um, it, fair to say, Ed Brad, um, uh, I know Ed, and he's, he was never a big fan of Ericsson, even when he was playing particularly well for us, and he's certainly not a fan of him now. Um just briefly on Ericsson, rather than addressing Ed's question, uh, multi-layered question. Um, he played yesterday. My my thoughts were that he he just looked like a player that was completely disinterested. Whilst all the other players, like you said earlier, Nicky, there might have been an element of oh let's imp- let's impress the the new manager. I didn't get sense that from Ericsson when he came on. To me, that tells me that he's he's head is elsewhere and he's looking for a move out and nothing's going to change that yeah, get probably. stick on the bench you know they, well and as, as I said earlier he, if, if he's not performing well yes we all know what he's capable of but he's got no current form to speak of so is anybody going to come knocking on the door for him I mean we might have to pay someone to take him off our hands if this is how he continues mm. so yeah, it's 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 not a great situation to be in, and I think it's very silly if that is what he's doing, um, unless he's going through something personally that we don't know about. I mean, we don't know what goes on in their in their personal lives. There might be something that is affecting it, and that's why Pochettino stuck with him through thick and thin, or Pochettino stuck with him through thick and thin for lack of other options. I don't know. If Jose gets it right, great. If he doesn't, I think Ericsson's his own worst enemy then because no one is going to come knocking on the door for him unless it's a, a European team that, um, that doesn't have very high expectations and they're going to be buying Ericsson from years gone by. I, I reckon, I reckon, I, I understand that and I would, love, I would love to agree wholeheartedly, but I think in the nature of football, we know that players play themselves out of a club and... Uh, yeah, any club would take a punt on him at the age he is and the, the form he's capable of, what he can do, knowing that um, they can switch on and switch off as they want, and that you know there's a risk there. You said if it's a personal thing, uh, whether it's a personal thing or a professional thing, I agree with you. But either way, he should be off the pitch if he can't perform. Uh, it's yeah. He shouldn't. He shouldn't have been playing. He, he's clearly not been pulling his weight or doing what we know he's capable of for some time. And I don't really care what the cause of that is. And that needs to be fixed before he comes back. And he should be out of the matchday squad, frankly. I think bench is even too generous for him. I mean, Mourinho made the statement by putting him on the bench. Fair enough. But I think he probably played himself out of his plan to a great, great degree by the way he played yesterday. Okay, we've got. We're going to finish off with two reoccurring questions, which are slightly more light-hearted. And um, before I do that, the final thing I just, I just wanted to say on this whole. You know, sacking of Pochettino, the Enoch element, the players, the the appointment of, of Jose Mourinho, Mourinho, and and trying to trying to make sense of it all, trying to reconcile it, trying to trying to arrive at a place that I'm happier, content. I don't know. Um, 
I think that we we are Spurs fans. We were Spurs fans, um, you know, long before we did this pod five years ago. We were Spurs fans before Pochettino. Before that, when AVB was manager, when even when we had Tim Sherwood, we are Spurs fans, and we we will be Spurs fans today in difficult times. We will be Spurs fans with Jose Mourinho at the helm. And we're still going to be Spurs fans when Jose gets a sack or when um, Daniel Levy's driving in a tunnel and meets a meets a white Fiat P- P- Punto or, um, in a Paris tunnel on his way back from the Ritz, um, and and he's no longer our chairman. Um, we're still going to be Spurs fans, and I think that you know players will come and go, managers come and go, chairmen come and go, Um, we will have opinions, we will have disagreements with fans over that time, but um, the one constant is is our support for the club, and and I think that will will continue, and uh, yeah. Um, All right, final two questions. So these are reoccurring questions, um, which uh, I ask um, guests that have appeared on the on the podcast for the first time this season, and as it's your first time on the pod this season, um, so two questions. Um, firstly, from John Stegles, new White Hart Lane has been taken over by an international terrorist gang, and Daniel Levy and I can't read this now. This is this is this is this is outdated. I can't believe it. I've just noticed. So the question was: So uh, <laughs> New White Hart Lane has been. I'm, I'm disappointed you spotted it because I was going to point. So out. what do I do? So do I do I change the? Okay, new. For the benefit of for the benefit of oh we'll we'll just have to update it then new, so new 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 White Hart Lane has been taken over by an international terrorist gang and Daniel Levy and Jose Mourinho the manager have been taken hostage which three players past or present do you gang up with a team style to to free them and take the stadium back Nikki. <laughs> I'll free Daniel. I'll just I'll tell them they can take Mourinho. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, Jav, I saw this this question and I haven't really given it much thought to be fair. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it over to to Merrick. Has he been on the pod this season? <laughs> no, no. So it's, it's, it's oh, for both of you. Uh, I'll, I'll give uh, well, it some you, thought quickly. Uh, uh, you, you need you need a uh, the right kind of mix of different skills. So you know I would take uh, Clarence Seedorf because uh, he's the hard man. I would take uh, Glenn Hoddle, because he's the maestro who comes up with a plan to get you out of the hole, and Gascoigne, because he's the mental nut who will go forward and sort it all out. Good answer. Um, I, I fear the inclusion of... I actually fear that I fear the inclusion of Paul Gascoigne could just mean the plan is uh, aborted and, and, you, and, and, and the, the, and the terror, terrorists succeed, but um, good, good good answer anyway. Um, the, the, the other reoccurring question is from Sam Diggins. So, two Spurs players move into houses either side of you. Who would you like them to be? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. So, uh, definitely Danny Rose, because I love him. And nothing he does or will will make me stop loving him. I've loved him for many, many years. Everybody knows that. And uh, I'd like him to, to stop being scared when he sees me. So he would be first <laughs> on the one side. And I think on the other side, it's a toss-up between Sissoko, because, again, I just love him, and uh, and Gazaniga, because he's easy on the eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's so superficial, I know, but what can I say? <laughs> you, Merrick? Good, good enough reason to me. Uh, is, it, is it current Spurs players or is it uh, past or it present? It is. Uh, well, it doesn't um, say, it, does it? It doesn't say, does it? So you can be creative. I'm normally creative, but um, maybe we should just restrict it to current players. Okay, because I'm going to be quite dull quite middle-aged and say I'd happily take Ben Davis and Harry Kane because they're not going to have loud parties at night and they'd probably help <laughs> take the bins out and uh, look after neighbourhood watch scheme and probably have a dog to walk uh, yeah yeah. I don't want crazy party animals uh, living next door to me do I Mate, so, that's so a very... reliable, reliable that's... types that's, that's a fair. very that's very good answer right um, I'll be recording um, I'm going to be recording a a, firstly, apologies, apologies to, uh, for any questions that um, I didn't get 
round to reading um some of those questions i might say for later in the week because i'm recording a special podcast on hopefully on wednesday um where my guest will be um, a chap called joe joe barton um he's a screenwriter um most recently he's um written the uh, scripts for Jiri Haji which is a um, TV series on uh, on the BBC it's, it's available at the moment on the BBC and to viewers overseas um, it will be on Netflix Netflix even um, I don't know when it's going to be released on Netflix I don't know whether that's 2020 or whether it will be released in the next few weeks as soon as it finishes airing on BBC um, so Joe's written that he's also written Humans and various other things and he happens to be a Spurs fan so he'll be my guest um, in the middle of the week um so that's uh, extra mid- extra podcast to look forward to in the middle of the week um until then all that's left for me to say is thank you merrick thank you jab it's been you know it's been a tense conversation i understand that but passions run high and i appreciate the debate and remember remember it doesn't matter really what we think because at the end of the season amazon are going to tell us all anyway so <laughs> <laughs> um nikki thank you for your time Thank you. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. I've missed it. And, and uh, don't let me forget, happy anniversary, because thank you. You know, <laughs> it is our anniversary. <laughs> and thank you for all the listeners um, over the last five years who have listened to the podcast, um, who have uh, written in with their questions. And thank you to all, all my, not just um, yourself and Merrick, but all my guests over, that, over, those, over, the, over those last five years. Um, until next time, the future's bright, the future's lily white. Good night. So bloody slow, you are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run on to that green. White Hart Lane has seen its pain, it's had its low denies. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Pull on that lily white and run on to that green. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her.